What's up guys, it's that time again. We're gonna be talking about the best and worst makeup of 2023 so far. So I already did a video like this about three months ago and it's time to do another one. So anything that released like more toward the beginning of 2023, I probably already talked about in that video and I will link that at the end in case you enjoy this one and you wanna check that one out next. Right now we're gonna be focusing on products that I've tried since about March of this year and I'm not gonna be doing full reviews in this video either because I've already done those here on my channel. But if something piques your interest and you would like to see the full review on it, I'm going to just leave a little picture of the video thumbnail in the bottom corner as I'm talking about products. And that way you know which video it was actually featured in and can go back and watch it later. So we have a ton of stuff to go over today. So grab a snack, get comfortable, and let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. Okay, so let's start out with primer. I really only tried two primers in the last couple of months. I know in the last video I did like this, I tried like eight of them. Um, so I only have two to share with you and I'll just talk about them really briefly. The first one is the Beauty Blender Boost Firming and Smoothing Peptide Primer and then the Hamish Artless Glow Base. This has SPF 30. So I definitely liked both of these. I don't really necessarily recommend the Beauty Blender one only because it reminds me so much of the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. It has that same really sticky grip kind of a feel. This one does have peptides in the formula, which the e.l.f. one doesn't, but I feel like if you're already using peptides in your skincare, you don't necessarily really need them in your primer. So I don't really see myself reaching for this one that much because when I do want a really long lasting gripping type of primer, I usually just use the e.l.f. one. I mean, obviously I will use this up and get some use out of it, but I don't think it's really worth spending your money on. Just go grab the e.l.f. one and save a little bit of money. And when it comes to the hand Hamish Artless Glow Base. I really like this a lot. It's a beautiful glowy primer. And like I said, it does have the SPF 30 in here. So it does give you a really nice glowy base. And this is a K-Beauty brand. And I always feel like Korean SPFs in particular just have a really elegant and silky feel to them. Now, is this that much different than the e.l.f. glowy SPF that they came out with a little while ago? Not really. I mean, it's not super expensive. So if you happen to be a fan of Korean sunscreens, it might be worth picking this one up. But if you have the e.l.f. one already, I don't know how much different this one really is than that one. So again, it might just be one to skip if you want to save a couple bucks and just buy the e.l.f. Next up, when it comes to foundation, I tried 11 different ones in the past couple of months. A couple of them are not new releases. The rest of them are new and have come out recently. So I guess let's just go from best to worst. I would say my number one foundation these days is the Hamish Moringa ceramide BB cream. I got this on Amazon. You can also get it on Yes Style. It is, again, a Korean brand, and I just love this so much. I think the biggest downside to this is that the shade range isn't too good. It is more of a sheer product, so I think one shade can kind of cover a variety of skin tones, but I just love the coverage level. It has a nice, like, light to medium coverage. It has that sunscreen already built in, and it just really looks so natural and very skin-like, especially if you're dry. It's not going to look cakey and it doesn't settle into fine lines. It just looks so beautiful. I would say then in my number two spot is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. So this also is not a new foundation. It's been out there for a really long time, but I got this during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty back in, was it March or April? After so many of you guys recommended that I try it and I kept thinking I have really dry skin and I've heard that this can be drying, but so many of you guys with dry skin told me that I should just try it and I went ahead and got it at the 50% off and I'm so happy with it. I'm wearing it today in the video. I've been wearing it so much and I think throughout the summer this is gonna be a great option that has a little bit more coverage than the Hamish one. As long as I prep my skin with hydrating skincare and I apply this with a damp beauty sponge, it looks phenomenal on my skin. In the video where I talked about it, I showed some close-ups and my skin did not look dry at all. It didn't look flaky. This has such a nice thin formula that really just just sinks into your skin without sitting on top like a mask. And it truly does last all day. So I think this is gonna be great for those really humid days in the summer. I absolutely love it. I also tried two powder foundations recently. I have the Moira Complete Wear Powder Foundation and the Makeup Forever HD Skin Velvet or Matte Velvet. 
and both of these I really liked a lot. I was never the biggest fan of powder foundations having dry skin, but I just think the formulas have come such a long way. And honestly, both of these, you really can't go wrong with them. I would probably just grab the Moira one if you can, because it's a lot cheaper, but I think the Makeup Forever one also, they're just both very seamless and look really natural on your skin. They don't look cakey or dry. So I think these are both incredible options. I also really enjoyed the Say Super Skin. What is this one called? Glowy Super Skin Foundation. This is a very light coverage, so you have to be okay with that. It's gonna show like freckles and things like that through it, but it does a nice job at hiding my redness and it is very, very hydrating, great for dry skin. I think maybe those who are more oily might find it a little too emollient and it might not be the longest lasting formula on that skin type, but for me, I had no issues with it. I think this is a great one just for every day, like a really casual light coverage. Like I just wanna even everything out quick and go. So I really liked this one as well. And then another one that kind of has similar results is the number seven Hydra Luminous Aqua Release Skin Perfector. This is like a tinted moisturizer slash BB cream. And it has, again, pretty decent coverage. I would say it's similar to the Say. It, it has light coverage that can be built up a little bit, but I also think this is truly very skin-like and it just looks really natural. So this is another great one to check out at the drugstore. All right, so those are the foundations I really liked. Now let's get into the ones that I was just kind of so-so about. The first one is the KVD Good Apple Foundation. This one is so full coverage, which I normally am not a big fan of these days, but it really does cover everything. And I find that as long as I prep my skin really well and I apply it with a damp beauty sponge and not a brush, that it kind of shears it out and it can look good on my skin, but it also has the potential to look a little dry and a little bit too heavy. So whether it looks good really depends on the condition of my skin that day, how much I apply and how I apply it. So this is kind of a little bit of a finicky formula for me, but I can get good results with it if I do like all the right steps. Another one that I was just kind of so-so about is the number seven foundation stick. The first time I used this, I absolutely hated it. I think I just swiped it on and then blended with my fingers and it just looked like a lot of foundation sticks do on me. It's like a thicker cream formula and it looked like it was kind of sitting on top of my skin rather than going into it. But once I actually applied it a second time with a damp beauty sponge, it pushed it into the skin a little bit more, thinned out the formula and it looked a lot better. So this kind of like the KVD one is a formula that you just have to kind of work with it and it might not immediately be a favorite, but if you apply it in a certain way, it could work for you. Then there were two foundations that I really, really didn't like. The first one is the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour skin tint. I just talked about this in a very recent video and I found this to be pretty similar to the L'Oreal Hyaluronic Serum Foundation. Um, it's full of alcohol, first of all. It's like the fourth ingredient. It even smells like alcohol. And on my dry skin, it's just too much. It really leaves me feeling dry and tight. I have to say this one didn't look as dry on my skin as the L'Oreal one did, but I just found that throughout the day, my skin just started feeling really dried out. And I think if I were to wear this on a daily basis, it probably wouldn't be the best thing for my skin. So I think if you are more on the dry side, you may want to avoid this one. And in the very last spot would have to be the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow. I was really excited for this one. I love the juicy lips and I was kind of picturing this as just like a really dewy skin tint, but unfortunately it is full of glitter or I should say it's full of mica, which just gives you this really shiny kind of Tin Man like effect. It's way, way too much. The first time I used this, it just looked like I put highlighter all over my face. Some people may love that. You just want like that extra glow and that's fine. For me, I just thought that it enhanced every bit of texture on my face. I would definitely skip this if you don't like a glowy base. All right, next up, moving on to concealer. I tried three different concealers the last couple of months. Um, the first one actually isn't really a concealer. I just put it in this category and that is the Doll 10 Color Corrector. And I love this stuff so much. 
It brightens up my under eyes. It reminds me so much of the Becca one in that it's really hydrating and it doesn't crease under my eyes or make my under eyes look cakey. Wherever I put it, the darkness just kind of goes away and then my concealer doesn't have to work as hard. I can just add a tiny little bit of concealer over it and I'm good to go. It really just cancels out everything. And like I said, I just love the texture and how hydrating and kind to your skin it is. So that one is amazing probably my top pick when it comes to concealer. And I would say another one that I love almost just as much is the Glowish Bright Light Concealer from Huda Beauty. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this because I'm not crazy about the Glowish skin tint. I thought very similar to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glow. It was super like shiny and had tons of mica in the formula. So I didn't like the skin tint. But when I tried this, I immediately fell in love with it because it is just one of the most natural looking concealers. It doesn't have a ton of coverage, so keep that in mind. But if you're just looking to kind of brighten up your eye area a little bit, or if you use a color corrector first and you just don't need that much coverage afterwards, this looks so natural, yet it brightens up your skin and just, it looks so good. So this is another one I definitely recommend. And then the third thing that I tried also was a color corrector and that was from Moira. These were their CC Prep Concealers. And they come in a bunch of different colors. They have like the peachy colors and they have a darker, almost like orangey red color for deeper skin tones. And they're supposed to color correct um, your under eye area or anywhere on your face. And normally I am a huge fan of Moira's products. Very rarely do they ever let me down. But this was one of those instances because I just felt like these were so glowy Again, kind of like the Tarte Juicy Glow, it just enhanced all of the texture around my eyes. Unfortunately, it was just way too much glow for me, so that's why I don't recommend these. Next up, when it comes to powders, I did try two of them over the past couple of months. I have the Doll 10 Pink Brightening Treatment Powder and the Makeup Forever HD Skin Twist and Light. So I definitely prefer the Doll 10 powder. This one is a pink powder, so these are really popular right now. And it just has the silkiest texture. It melts right into your skin. It doesn't leave any kind of a powdery residue. And the pink color just brightens up and wakes up your skin. It's absolutely beautiful and the weightless formula is very dry skin friendly. It's never gonna make your skin look dry or cakey. It's amazing and when it comes to the Makeup Forever, First of all, I love the packaging. I think it is genius. I wish all powders came in this kind of packaging. So it's empty in the center. You just twist the bottom and it just dispenses a little bit of the product into this little well. And then you just swirl your brush around and it's mess free, which I really loved. But what I didn't love about this one is that it left my skin with too much glow. Again, we're kind of sensing a theme here, but this has just a really glowy finish and I felt like before I put this on, my skin looked perfectly fine and afterwards it just felt like I could see all of my pores. So even though the texture feels really nice and light and very silky and blendable, sadly I just wasn't crazy about the finish. If they would make another version of this without the glow, I would definitely buy it. Okay, moving on to blushes. There are so many blushes to talk about these days. They just seem to be one of the most popular makeup items right now. So I do have a lot to go over and I had to break them up into cream and liquid blushes and powder blushes because just with my cream and liquid formulas alone, I have 10 of them to talk about. So again, I'm just gonna try to go through these very quickly. First up is not a new formula, but it's one that I tried the last couple of months and I'm just enjoying it so much. This is definitely my number one and it's the Kiko Milano Lush Sticks. So I have this one in particular, shade number four. This hot pink has just been one that I'm reaching for over and over again. And what I love about this formula is just how lightweight it is and it has this really velvety feel that blends out so easily. You hardly even have to blend them. They dry down instantly and then for me, they stay in place all day. So I've been reaching for these a ton because the stick format is just so easy. You just swipe it on. I usually just blend it with my fingers, one, two, three, and I'm good. So these have definitely been my most reached for blush of the moment. Then probably in the number two spot, I would have to give it to these Juvia's Place blushes. I did an entire dedicated video to these and I love the colors, I think more than anything. They do have a little bit of a learning curve as far as applying them because 
they are so pigmented. You just need the tiniest little dot on your cheeks. So you really can go overboard with these if you're not careful. And I think that's the one negative thing I have to say about them. But otherwise, they blend into the skin beautifully. Again, you can use your fingers. You can apply them with a sponge, which is what I normally do. And they just go on really seamlessly. They give your cheeks this really nice dewy look, but at the same time, they're not sticky. They do dry down all the way. So these are an awesome formula as well. I also recently tried this new blush from Beauty Pie, which is in the shade Astro Pink. This is their Super Cheek blushes, which they do have regular matte finish, but they have some glowy finishes for summer. Um, and I'm actually wearing this one in the video today, and I wore this in another video a couple days ago when I did a Get Ready With Me, and I was just so struck by how beautiful this is. It almost reminds me of NARS Orgasm blush a little bit. It's that perfect peachy pink with a little bit of a golden sheen to it. It has a little bit of a shift. It's not glittery. It just gives the perfect glow. And the silky texture of this is super easy to work with. So I highly recommend checking this one out. And as well as their other super cheek blushes in the matte finish, if you don't like a glow, because those are really amazing as well. Um, another blush I really enjoy lately is the Blush Bomb from Revolution. So packaging wise, it looks almost the same as the Juvia's Place, but um, I don't think the formula of these is quite the same. These aren't as pigmented, but I find them to be pretty close. I think the reason they're not as high up as the Juvia's for me is just because these only come in a couple of colors and the Juvia's Place has a much better range. And I just find that these colors are a little bit more unique. And it was like every one that I put on my cheek in the video that I did, I was wowed by just how beautiful the color was. So color is really the reason that I rank the Juvia's Place ones higher than these, but I do really like these two. I think they're a great formula. I just think it's a little bit more of a limited range. Another one from Revolution that I think is great are these Fast Base blushes. They're a blush stick and they have this almost gel-like texture. I have two colors, which is all that I saw in my local stores, but I think on the Revolution website, they have like six different shades. So I would be curious to check out more of them because the gel formula is just really nice. They almost leave a stain behind on your cheeks and these pops of color are just beautiful for the summertime and they also dry down all the way and they're not sticky. They have a lot of pigmentation, a little bit goes a really long way. So I really like these too. In the next position, kind of somewhere in the middle are the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Blushes. So I was basically prepared to hate these because when I first got them, I was like, this is the greasiest thing. It feels like they basically took their Maracuja Juicy Lips and melted it down into a pot. And I was like, I'm not gonna like this. It's gonna feel sticky and tacky on my cheeks all day, but they surprisingly don't. And I think because these are those pH adjusting formulas. So when you put a little tiny amount on your cheeks, they just kind of bloom into the color that they're gonna be. And so you don't need much at all. You just need the tiniest little bit. And if you don't use a lot, they really really do blend into your skin nicely and disappear and they don't leave a greasy feel. So I, I actually really like these and when I tried them on in the video where I talked about them, so many of you guys were really complimentary and said that you loved the colors and the way that they looked. So I think these are a really great option as well. Next up we have the new Charlotte Tilbury Pinkasm Sunset Blush. So this one, I do like it, even though it's a little bit lower down on my list. I think the reason for that is because when I tried this one on in a video, I compared it to the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blush in Barbados, which I think is an incredibly similar color. And when I put these on, at the time, I didn't really see anything wrong with the Charlotte Tilbury one when I applied it. But then reading the comments of that video, everybody was like, the e.l.f. one looks so much better on you. So then I kind of watched it back with more of a critical eye and you are all right. This one did look a little patchy on my cheeks. So I think if I were gonna reach for a color like this, which is that warm kind of coppery rosy brown, I would probably just grab my e.l.f. one. I don't really see myself reaching for this one over that one. So while I don't think it's a bad blush and that day when it looked patchy, it could have just been user error or whatever I was wearing underneath. I think because the e.l.f. one is so close to this, I regret buying it a little bit. I don't know. Next up, I also tried some new blush sticks from Catrice. These are called Cheek Flirt. And I wasn't the craziest about these. They have a little bit of a waxy feel. They're harder to blend than something like the Kiko blush sticks, 
which are so smooth and silky. These have a little bit of drag when you go to put them on your cheeks. They're a little like too thick maybe. So when you go to blend them, the stickiness that they have kind of like I worry about it moving my foundation around. They just don't feel like the best quality formula to me. So I would much prefer to reach for either the Makeup Revolution blush sticks or the Kiko ones. Um, another one that I wasn't really crazy about are the new e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wands. These are okay. I wouldn't say they're bad. When I did a whole video on these wondering if they were a Charlotte Tilbury dupe because obviously they're trying to copy, I was a little bit happier with the way the Charlotte Tilbury ones looked on my skin than these. For some reason, these are a little bit more sheer. The Charlotte Tilbury ones, I think, add more color and a little bit of glow. These are a little heavier on the glow and less on the color. And as I've continued to use them, I've been realizing that more and more. And I think I like them less than I did the first day I tried them. I think back then, I was just so excited to have a really accessible dupe for Charlotte Tilbury at the drugstore, but the longer I've been using these, the more I realize that they are not really a dupe. And I said in my video that I didn't think that they were a dupe. They're definitely a similar product, but I do like the Charlotte Tilbury better just because they add a little bit more color and less glow. But that being said, if you're in the market for a glowy liquid blush and you don't wanna spend a lot of money, I think these are fine. I don't think they're that bad. You just really can't compare them, I think, to the formula of the Charlotte Tilbury. They just didn't look the same on me. And then at the bottom of my list are these number seven lip and cheek tints. These were just way too greasy and I wasn't crazy about how how they like looked and felt on my cheeks. They were a little bit patchy. I think because they have a little bit more of like a glossy feel, they're just better suited to lips than they are to cheeks. So those are all of my cream formulas. Let's talk about powder. So in the number one position for me, I would have to say the new L'Oreal Infallible Blushes. These have the silkiest formula. They're so soft, just like the bronzer. If you enjoy the bronzer formula, you're gonna absolutely go crazy for these. I wish that they came in more colors than just four. Hopefully they will expand the range. When I bought these, I wasn't expecting to love them as much as I do. And I think it's partly because I wasn't super head over heels for any of the four colors that they have, but they really come alive on your skin and they look so much better on than they do just looking at them in the pan. When I did a try on, I was just blown away by all four colors. I just think they're gorgeous. Not to mention how easily they blend and how seamless they look on the skin. So those are a little bit on the pricey side for drugstore, but I think the formula is just so high quality. Another blush formula I really, really love are these Catrice Air Blushes. So they have an air blush glow, an air blush matte. So the glowy ones I really like because they're not super glowy. They just have a tiny hint of more of like a satin finish, which I think is just beautiful. The matte ones also, they're just so silky, really velvety. They give nice pigmentation, so you don't need a lot and they blend out on your cheeks really nicely as well. So I think this is another stellar formula. Definitely recommend getting these. You can find them on Amazon. Another powder blush that's beautiful are these House Labs blushes. This color in particular, Dragon Fruit Days, is just so gorgeous. These have a nice velvety, silky feel, very similar to the L'Oreal ones, but these are incredibly pigmented. So I would say that's the one downside and why these aren't a little bit higher on my list is just that having a more fair skin tone, I have to be careful with blush because it can look overwhelming on me really quickly. Really pigmented formulas like these are just something that I have to be more mindful of when I'm applying blush. But other than that, love the formula, love the colors. I think these are also very long lasting. ColourPop had also sent me the whole range of their new powder blushes. They had pressed powder blushes in the past and then for a while they discontinued them and they had the ones like in the little heart shape containers that would come out with various collections but they didn't really have like a permanent line of powder blushes anymore but now they do they're back and I've really been loving these so much particularly this color flamingo I think it's a really great alternative to 
the Dior Rosy Glow Blush, the pink one that everybody likes. Believe it or not, I like this one even better than the Dior because the Dior one that I have, it got hard pan and it is so hard to pick it up with a brush. And this one is just very silky. It blends out beautifully on the cheeks and it picks up really easily with a brush. So I love these, they're super affordable and they come in tons of different colors. The next blush I was so excited about but I ended up feeling a little bit let down and that's the new Blonzers from Bare Minerals. So I got a couple of new shades that they have, one of which is Kiss of Mauve. This is the one I think I was the most excited about because I was hoping for a cool toned option. But unfortunately, when I applied this to my cheeks, it looked so much warmer than I was expecting. And also it has way more glow than the previous ones. And I'm not against glowy blushes. I do like to wear them from time to time, but I just felt like this one had way more glow than the previous ones to the point where it almost almost didn't seem like the same formula. So while I do like it, I was a little disappointed just because it wasn't what I was expecting it to be. So they're definitely not bad, but if you're looking for a cooler tone blush option in the bronzer line, you're not gonna find it because I just didn't feel like this one had that cool undertone that I was hoping for. And then in last place would probably be the Catrice Summer Glow Palette. And this is not bad by any means. I actually did like this. I think the reason that it's in last place for me is because I don't tend to use palettes like this because usually not all of the shades work for me. And I found that with this one, I think the one of the bronzers that's in it is a little bit too light. I was wearing the darker bronzer for the most part. And then also, so when it comes to the highlighters, the gold one was just a little bit deeper than I would normally wear. So I think, you know, with palettes like this, they try to cater to a bunch of different people, but in the end, it always results in you not being able to wear a few shades in the palette. So I felt like this was okay. Honestly, I didn't think any of the powder blushes that I tried were bad. Really, I think this one is just in last place because it's the one that I'm least likely to reach for. The next category is bronzer and contour. So as far as bronzers go, I I tried three different ones the last couple months. The first one is the Jones Road Bronzer in Dusty Rose. So this is actually such a unique color. It's perfect for those of us who have a cooler undertone, who, you know, always when you try a bronzer, it looks a little too yellow or too orange. This one is that perfect pink undertone, but it's also a little bit bronzy as well. I have not been able to find a dupe for this in my entire collection, looking at both my blushes and my bronzers. So if you've been looking for a bronzer, like this. It's just so unique. I highly recommend it. It is a little bit more on the pricey side, but I think because it's so unique and you can't really find anything else like it, it's definitely worth the splurge. Another bronzer that I'm loving so much is the cream bronzer from Beauty Pie. I have it in the shade Goldilocks and I used this in a recent get ready with me and I was blown away by the formula of this. It feels even better than the Chanel one, which I think it's sort of trying to dupe or copy. It's just so silky, so easy to blend. It dries right down to that powder finish so it doesn't move your foundation around underneath. And this color is perfection. It's not too orangey, it's not too warm, it's not too cool. It's really just perfect for my skin tone. So I'm a huge fan of that one. And the third one that I tried is the Rare Beauty bronzer stick in the shade Bright Side. So I had her other bronzer stick from a while ago, but this was a new color that came out this year and this was supposed to be a cooler tone option and it definitely is a lot cooler than the original one that I had so I like this one so much better and the formula of this as well it is so silky it's one of the most blendable cream bronzers I've ever tried if not the most I would say it could be like at number one it's truly an effortless experience I just draw this on and it takes me two seconds to blend it into my skin and it looks really really natural so I would say all the bronzers that I tried this month I really got along with and I like them a lot. As far as contour, I would say my favorite contour product is probably the Liquid Contour from Moira. These come in really, really good colors. The lightest shade, 100, which is fair light, is like the perfect cooler undertone. And I like this one as much as I like the Charlotte Tilbury one, maybe even more because I like the packaging of this a little bit better. It's just neater and cleaner to use. But the formula is just as pigmented as the Charlotte Tilbury one, and it blends out just as easily on the skin. I like this one better than the Flower Beauty Contour, the Milani one, the Tarte one that came out. There's so many different versions, but I think I like this one better 
better than all of them. I think part of that is just that I like this color so much, but also the formula is really, really good too. And then another contour stick that I tried is uh, the one from Milk Makeup. This is in the shade Toasted. And this one too, I mean, the product itself is really nice. I love the color of it and I think it blends out really well. But the reason that this one is in the number two spot for me is that it's so small and they used to make their products a lot bigger for the same price. I wanna say this was like $24. It's just really expensive for what looks like a mini deluxe size. So while I do think it's a good product, I don't know if it's a good value necessarily. And then in third place, I would say is the Make It Forever Contour Palette. This is really nice. I mean, I think the formula, you honestly can't beat it. You have concealers in here, you have contour shades and highlighters, and they're all so silky and beautiful. They really just melt into the skin so effortlessly. The only downside, or the big downside to this is that it's $85. It's very expensive, and for me, I can only use a couple of shades in this palette. I can only use one or two of the concealers, one of the contour, and then like one or two of the highlighters. So there's a lot of wasted product in here for me and I think it would be better suited probably to somebody who is a makeup artist who is going to be doing makeup on a lot of different skin tones because anybody else who buys this palette whether you have a deeper skin tone or if you're lighter like I am there are going to be shades in here that you're just not going to use so I think that's probably the biggest downside to a palette like this in a way I wish they had done maybe one that was half the size and just did two different versions like one for light skin tones and one for deeper I think that probably would have made a little bit more sense, but I know that Makeup Forever is a makeup artist brand, so they might have had makeup artists in mind when they created this. So I don't think it's a bad product. I just don't see myself reaching for it a lot. It's not super useful for me. Next up, when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, I do have a lot of them to talk about. So I'm gonna go like, I guess in order from my most favorite to least favorite. So starting with the Moira Land palette. So I got these in PR couple months ago now and they have this really fun carnival theme and you guys know how I feel about Moira's eyeshadows. They are one of my favorite formulas and they're so affordable and I thought that these palettes were just beautiful. Particularly the purple one. I just loved the color story of this. I wore it so often over the past couple of months. The other one was a little bit brighter and not as much my speed but I just feel like the quality of these is so incredible for the price that you pay and if you don't like these particular color stories the other ones that come in this style of packaging are just as good so definitely check out their website because they're one of my favorite affordable eyeshadow brands and then I would say in my number two position would be the new Sigma nine pan palettes that they came out with they launched a bunch of new palettes to add to their existing line and again I just think Sigma's formula is incredible I love the colors that they come up with and the themes I just think they're so beautiful and I actually did a video where I compared the new ones to the older ones to see if there was any overlap. So if you're curious, definitely check out that video. But these were definitely some of my favorite palettes over the last couple of months. In the number three position is the one that I'm wearing in the video today, and that would be the Too Faced Italian Spritz palette. I really like this one as well. I haven't always been a big fan of Too Faced's eyeshadow formula lately. I think in the past it was always amazing, and then the last few palettes that they came out with didn't really wow me. This one felt back to their old formula. I didn't have any issues with some of the shadows getting hard pan or being difficult to pick up. I felt like everything applied and blended really nicely and I think it's just a gorgeous summer palette. So this is another one that I really, really enjoy. Next up, we have the Alter Ego Coastal Palette, and I did an entire video on this one as well and compared it to the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette, which the Alter Ego was duping. And I really, at the end of the day, did not see a difference in my eye look from one to the other. I felt like the Alter Ego performed just as well as the Huda Beauty. And I love Huda's formula, so that's definitely saying something, but to be able to save that much money and get the same sort of an eye look is just incredible. And I absolutely love the shades that are in that one. Those are right up my alley. So that's definitely another great palette to check out. Um, I would say after that would be the Natasha Denona Yucca palette. And I just did a whole video on five reasons why you should or shouldn't buy that one. So I'm not going to go too in depth, but 
I personally love the color story. I got a ton of comments from people saying that those types of colors don't look good on them or that it makes them look sick or jaundiced. And I can see that. I mean, those yellowy greens and browns aren't everybody's cup of tea. I think I have to be in the right mood for them or be wearing something that that would coordinate with. So the reason I think it's a little bit lower down on my list is just because I don't see myself reaching for it as much as these other palettes I talked about. Again, because of that color and the undertone, even though I do really like it and I created some beautiful looks with it that I was really happy with. I think it's just one of those palettes that, you know, almost every color in the palette has that sort of undertone. So I have to be like wearing something that that'll coordinate with, which isn't very often. So um, that's like in the number five position for me. Then um, right after that would be the Dominique Essentials palette. I liked this one. I Okay. I felt like the formula was pretty good, but it's just a little bit boring to me and I should have known that before I purchased it, but there was a lot of hype around it. I really wanted to try it out. I just think this is not too much different than other palettes I have in my collection that are neutral, especially like my Doll 10 Doll Squad palettes. I feel like they're kind of similar to this. So I personally like the Doll Squad formula a little bit better and I feel like I would reach for those more than I would this one. So I felt like this one was okay. It's not my favorite. Um, next we have the ColourPop Smokin' Hot palette. This is another one that I actually really enjoyed a lot. I just don't think it's super unique as far as the colors. We have a lot of these warm tone colors in other palettes. So I don't think it's anything to get super excited about, but I think the thing that I love the most about it is that I have all of those warm tones in one palette. So when I wanna reach for warm tones from now on, I'm probably just gonna grab that one because it's gonna have any color that I would need to create a look. So I do love it for just putting all of the warm tone colors like in one spot. It just makes it super easy. But is it something that I'm getting like super excited about? Not necessarily as much as the other ones, but I do still really like it a lot. Next we have the Alter Ego Midsummer Palette. Again, beautiful palette, gorgeous formula. And I think it's super similar to the Anastasia Nouveau Palette, which it's duping. And I did a whole video on this as well. I think the reason it's just further down on my list list is only because the Nouveau palette wasn't my favorite to begin with. I think I definitely prefer the Rose Quartz dupe that Alter Ego did because those colors are more my speed and what I would reach for a little bit more often than this one. But I still think the formula is incredible and they did an amazing job on the dupes. So I still think it's an awesome palette. After that, we have the Catrice Electric Rose palette, which I got on Amazon. And I was really pretty impressed with this one too. I think why it's a little bit lower down on my list is really not formula related because I thought the formula was great. I just think that it's it's such a small palette that I really can only get like a very similar look out of it. No matter what color I use, I just feel like it kind of all comes out the same. It's just those really pretty rosy tones, which I love. I just don't see a lot of versatility in it. So I'm less likely to reach for it unless I just want like a rosy tone look, but I do really like the palette, no complaints. I mean, honestly, I don't really think I tried anything bad as far as eyeshadow palettes this time around. And then in the last spot would be the Joa Color Haul palette. So these were ones that I also also liked. I mean, again, I don't think anything that I tried in the last couple of months has been really terrible. I thought these were a good formula. They're a little bit more on the buildable side, so they're not as pigmented as some of the other shadows that I talked about, but they are very affordable. They're easy to get if you go to the drugstore, they're at CVS, and the colors and the themes were really pretty, so I don't think that these were bad. They just didn't excite me as much as some of the other palettes I tried, but I think these are still definitely worth checking out. Next up, I also also tried quite a few different cream eyeshadow formulas. So I wanted to just go through those really quickly. And you all know what I'm gonna say as far as my favorites, that would have to be the Sephora Collection eyeshadow sticks. I love these so much, they're so creamy, and I've been reaching for them a lot on those days when I just want a really quick eye look, like a one and done type of a shadow. These are beautiful, they are just really, like I said, they're super creamy, they're easy to blend out, but also they set down and they stay in place all day without creasing. They're my number one 
cream eyeshadow formula. I think they're as good as the Laura Mercier caviar sticks. So I tried these out right before the Sephora sale and then I ended up getting a bunch more colors when they were 30% off. And I think at $14, even at full price, they're definitely worth it. So highly recommend those. In second place would be the Milani Gilded eyeshadow sticks. These I thought were also good but I wasn't as crazy about the matte shades as I was the shimmers. I think the shimmer ones go on really smoothly. And again, they don't crease, they set down and they're good for the day. But I felt like the matte ones go on a little bit patchy and they were a little harder to blend for me while the shimmer ones were just really silky and creamy and beautiful. So I think with the Milani ones, I would probably stay away from the matte ones and just stick with the shimmers because I thought those were really good. Then kind of more toward the bottom of my list would be the new Made Maybelline color tattoo eyeshadow sticks. Those are not my favorite. I just talked about those in a recent video and I felt like the look that I got with them was just really patchy. They felt like they tugged on my eyelids. They weren't as creamy as the Sephora or the Milani ones. And the shimmer shades weren't as shimmery as they were glittery. They had tiny little glitter pieces that kind of got all over my face. So I wasn't really impressed with the Maybelline eyeshadow sticks, unfortunately. But I think the other two are definitely worth checking out, particularly the Sephora ones. And then I also had gotten some eyeshadow sticks from Hourglass. And I probably should have put these above the Maybelline ones, actually. So I'm going a little bit out of order here, but um, I don't like these as much as the Sephora collection or the Milani but I like them better than the Maybelline. They're not as dry as the Maybelline and they go on really well, but I just found them to be extremely subtle. The colors just don't really show up as much as I was hoping that they would. They're not really that vibrant and I just felt like I had to keep putting them on over and over and layering them up just to get them to pop a little on my eyes. So, I mean, if you like a really, really subtle eyeshadow, then I think that you might like these, but for me, I just felt like they were super expensive and I just wasn't getting getting the looks that I wanted out of them. So for that reason, I have them a little bit lower on the list. And then finally, we had the ColourPop Liquid Chrome Shadows. And these are beautiful duochrome liquid shadows that I was so excited for. And when I tried to apply them in a video, they just weren't really sticking to my eyelids. They were patchy, they didn't look smooth, and I really struggled to apply these. And I don't think a lot of other people had the same issue as I did, so I'm not sure if I was doing something wrong, but I tried to use them on several different occasions and they just never looked right on me for some reason. So unfortunately, those ended up at the bottom of my list, even though most of the time I love ColourPop and I have really good luck with most of their products. So next up, when it comes to mascara, I only tried tried two new mascaras in all of this time, which is kind of hard to believe and I might be missing something, but I'm pretty sure when I look back through the videos, I could only find two. The first one is the Fenty Hella Thick, and this one I am wearing in the video today, and I do love the way that it makes my lashes look. It gives so much volume and a little bit of length as well, but unfortunately it smudges on me, and it can get a little bit clumpy if you're not careful. So for that reason, it's not my absolute favorite mascara formula. I don't think it's terrible by any means, but it's just not one that I feel like I would repurchase after I'm done with this tube. And then the other one that I tried was the Joa High Roller Mascara, and this one is like Clump City. Please do not get this one if you don't like clumpy, spidery lashes, because I felt like this just was so hard to work with. It was hard to build it up, which is what I normally like to do with mascaras, because after the first coat, I really couldn't put any more, or else all of my lashes would just stick together, and I'd have like three big eyelashes. So if you don't like thicker, clumpier formulas, I would just completely avoid that one. Then when it comes to lips, I also have a bunch of different things to talk about. The first one is the NYX Fat Lip Oils. These are at my number one spot. And I know these are kind of polarizing. People love them or hate them. And I think the people who hate them from what I've heard, they just were expecting them to be like a lip oil, like a thinner oil. And they're a little thicker than they wanted them to be. But that's the reason why I love them so much because they really like grip to your lips and the thickness of them seems to smooth out your lip lines and fill them in a little bit. And they have that really cushiony texture. They're really more 
more like a lip gloss than an oil, if I'm being honest. But I just love how smooth they make my lips. I love all the colors that they come in and they just feel really good. They're not sticky. So those are definitely my number one lip product that I've just been reaching for constantly. And then in the number two position would have to be the new Maybelline Lifter Gloss Candy Drop Shades. And I did like a YouTube short where I tried on all the different colors. And I'm actually wearing one today. The color that I'm wearing in the video is Sweetheart, which is like this really bright orange in the tube, but it's not as bright when you put it on your lips. It's a little more sheer, um, but I love the lifter glosses. So this really wasn't a big surprise to me because the new colors are beautiful and the formula is amazing. They just make your lips look so hydrated and so plump and they're not sticky. So those are awesome. Another really big favorite for me was the Moira Glow Getter Lip Oils. These are a lip oil but they are so pigmented they have so much color to them when i tried them on in a video i was really shocked by just how much pigment they had and these are a little bit of a thinner lip oil so for those of you who like a little bit less of a thicker texture like the nyx ones you might prefer the moira ones they do have still a little bit of a cushiony feel they're not the type of oil that's so thin that it just kind of like sinks into your lips and disappears but they're definitely not as thick as the NYX ones and they feel so silky and smooth on your lips. I also fell in love with the Bobbi Brown Extra Lip Tint. These also make your lips so smooth. When I put this one on for the first time, I was really, really impressed by the before and the after because it just smoothed out all of my lip lines and made such a smooth canvas. And also it has a really thick and cushiony feel. It's great for either layering underneath a lipstick or just wearing it alone. I think those are great. If you want a really nourishing lip balm, they're awesome. Another product that I didn't talk about in the cheek category, but it's actually a lip and cheek duo are the Huda Beauty Lip blushes. And the reason I didn't put them in the cheek category is because I hated them on my cheeks. I felt like they were too sticky and they didn't really blend out smoothly. They kind of looked a little patchy, but on the lips, they are so nice. I wore the pink one on my lips one day and it just makes the softest, prettiest lip stain that's not drying and it lasted so long on me. I think it's really hard to find a lip stain that doesn't make your lips feel all dried out. So this was just a really nice surprise. I was expecting to like them more on my cheeks and it ended up being the reverse. So I think these are great as far as lip products go. I also tried the new Rare Beauty lip oils and these are a little bit lower down on the list for me just because I was expecting a lip oil kind of like the NYX ones or the Moira ones. These are more of like a glossy stain kind of similar to a lot of the ones you find in K-Beauty brands or like e.l.f. has their glossy lip stain. I think Flower Beauty has one as well. So they're very, very pigmented and they go on with a little bit of gloss, but then that kind of wears away and then you're left with a little bit of a drier product. So on my lips, they did feel a little bit drier throughout the day and it showed my lip lines a little. So I much prefer something that is like a true lip oil or a gloss or a balm type of texture that kind of smooths those lines out a little bit more. Um, so I don't think that they're bad. They just weren't what I was expecting them to be. And I normally am not the biggest fan of that kind of lip product. So that's why those are a little bit lower on the list. And then um, in last place, I would say are the new Milani Stay Put Liquid Lipsticks. And I know a lot of people really like these. This is totally a personal preference thing, but I'm not somebody who wears matte liquid lipsticks because again, I have really dry lips and I have a lot of lines and it just kind of accentuates that. So I pretty much didn't like these just for that reason. But as far as liquid lipstick formulas go, I do think that these had a nice thin texture. They weren't as drying as other formulas that I've tried in the past. So I think if you're somebody who does like liquid lipsticks, you might really like this formula a lot. Again, it's really just a personal preference thing and I'm not a liquid lipstick person. Um, then I just have an other category at the bottom because there were a couple things that really just didn't fit in to one specific category. And the first one is the new Moira Super Hyped Liquid Pigments. These are something that you can use on your eyes, lips, and cheeks and I did that in a video. I used them to do a full face and I was so impressed by these. They 
come in matte finishes as well as shimmer finishes. And I thought that they worked really well on the eyes. They didn't crease once they set down and they also give you a lot of time to actually blend them out so they're not patchy. On the cheeks, they're beautiful as well. They have a nice velvety finish. And even on the lips, I just mixed it in with a little bit of lip balm before I applied it and it wasn't drying. So I love the versatility of these and they just come in so many beautiful colors and they're really affordable. So that was another big hit for me. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is the Wet n Wild Sesame Street collection. They did send me most of the collection to try out and I was just so disappointed in almost everything. I felt like the eyeshadow palette wasn't their usual good quality. The lip products, some of them had like a funky smell. Other ones just were kind of waxy and didn't perform the way that I would hope. I don't know, I just felt like the quality was not there. Normally I really like Wet n Wild stuff, but it just was a huge disappointment pretty much across the board. So that was unfortunate. And I know that they do have an Alice in Wonderland collab coming out next. So I'm hoping the quality on that one is a little bit better, but I don't know. I was just really disappointed with all of the Sesame Street stuff. So anyway, guys, I. I think that's everything. I may have missed things here and there. Like I said, I tried to go through all of my videos from the last four months or since I made the last one, um, but there could have been things that I missed here or there. So I, apologies if I did. And if there's anything that I didn't cover that you're wondering about, ask me down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer that. Also, if you wanna watch the last one that I did a few months ago, I'll put that right here so you can check that one out next. And also I wanna thank all of you who took time out of your day to spend it here with me and watch this video. I truly appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thanks guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.